Hi, this video will provide details on the workflow for reviewing schedules and writing notes in OnTarget. First, we will begin with reviewing schedules. To begin, click on Scheduling. Your schedules will most likely automatically display, as in this case. If they do not, then enter your name in the Caregiver filter and press Search. The default view is the month view, but you can toggle to week, work week, or day if needed. The schedules may be color coded based on the way your statuses are set up. This is just a way of organizing the events, most likely by service. In this case, all in-home skill building events are blue, PCS events are red, and all respite events are green. You can hover your mouse over any event to see the details, such as the client, service, date, time, and any comments entered by your supervisor. It is important that you review your scheduled events closely, particularly for the week at hand. Any changes will need to be communicated to your supervisor immediately. The reason for this is that your notes will be written directly from these scheduled events, which is a nice shortcut for writing the note along with ensuring that you are not working over the plan or authorization allotted amount of time. The most important things to review on your schedule are the dates that you're working, the clients you're working with, and the services you're providing. For example, if you know you're going to be providing in-home skill building on the 22nd, but you don't see a scheduled event for in-home skill building, then you would need to contact your supervisor right away. Otherwise, you would not be able to write your note for that shift. And keep in mind that your notes are required to be written within 24 hours, so the more you review your schedules routinely and communicate your changes to your supervisor, the better chance you'll have to complete your documentation on time. Changes in time are not necessarily required to be reported right away because time is the one thing you can change directly on your note. In most cases, you will only be able to change the time if it is less than what was scheduled. If you change the time to something over the scheduled time, then you will likely get a message for exceeding the units. This means that you have gone over the authorized amount of units for the day or week, and therefore your time for another day on the schedule will need to be adjusted before you can sign your note. We will go over this more when we review the notes, you may choose to export your calendar, which will provide you with a PDF of your schedules. Choose the date range that you'd like to review your schedule for, and it can be any date range you'd like, the day, the week, month, or even several months at a time. From here, you can either print the schedule or you can further export it to an Excel document, a PDF document, or even a Word document. This exports the information from the system for your own personal use. Now that we have gone over how to review your schedules, we will next look at how to write your notes. As mentioned earlier, you will write your note directly from the schedules. So first step is to always click on scheduling and then find the shift that you're ready to document. In this case, I'm ready to write the note for the in-home skill building shift with Mary Grid on September 19th. Clicking directly on that link will launch the note. The client, service, template, caregiver, and supervisor will auto-populate from the schedule. This is a nice shortcut for entering the note. You will then click the Add Date and Time button. The Service Date and Start Time and End Time fields are disabled, 
So the only thing you can click on is the schedule drop down. You will choose the shift in which you want to document. You will not see any shifts past the current day. Any shifts prior to the current day or the date selected from the calendar means that you have not yet started a note for that day. In this case, I have not yet written a note for the 16th, so even though I launched the shift for September 19th, the system still shows me that I have not yet written a note for the September 16th shift. This is a great reminder of work that needs to be completed. Once you have selected the shift, it is very important to review the time and ensure it is correct. If you worked something other than what was scheduled, then be sure to edit the time. Your documentation should always match the exact hours worked. If it doesn't, it is considered fraudulent. Click OK when you are done. In order to continue on with the note and to see the goals, click Save. Begin documenting the goals by marking the appropriate intervention key that was provided. The intervention keys may be different depending on the service provided. In this case, we are documenting against in-home skill building, but when we review the PCS note in a minute, you will notice that the keys are different. You may enter in either a number between 0 and 99 or the letter X under any of the intervention columns. For example, if this goal was completed independently, I would mark an X under the I for independent key. For the next goal, if three verbal prompts were required, I would enter in the number three under verbal prompt. Along with entering in the intervention for each goal, an assessment key must also be entered. For this goal, if it was completed independently, then the assessment key would most likely be yes that they completed the goal. For the next goal, if three verbal prompts were required, again, they may have met their goal. Notice that as you enter in an intervention and assessment key, the goal turns from yellow to white. This visual cue allows you to understand which goals have been completed and which ones have not. Yellow indicates the goal has not yet been addressed and white indicates that it has. The goal is considered to be complete once an entry has been made into both the intervention and assessment sections. You will not be able to sign the note until all goals are met. There are some keys that require a comment. For example, if I mark an NA in both the intervention and the assessment keys, when moving to the next goal, this still remains highlighted in yellow. This is because the NA key requires a comment. If I were to save this note, I would get the error message that it can't be saved because NA requires a comment. Now that a comment has been entered, the goal is satisfied and turns to white. You may save your work at any time. Even if you have not completed all the goals, you can save what you have completed and continue addressing the rest of them at a later time. To do so, hit save. It is recommended to routinely hit save even if you don't need to close out of the note, just simply to save your work. If you did need to log out of the system and come back and complete this note later, close the note and log out. When you are ready to complete the note, the next time you logged in, you'd come back to scheduling, find that shift on your calendar, and click on the link. This would again launch the note and you could clearly see what goals are in yellow, which goals are still incomplete. Once all goals are complete, hit save. You will be notified that your goals have been addressed and you will be asked if you'd like to complete the note by signing. This is the last step in the note. Every note must be signed in order for your supervisor to then review it and approve it. 
By clicking yes, you will then be asked to enter in your password. This is the same password that you use to log into the system. You may receive warning messages if there is anything systematically out of compliance with the note. In this case, there are certifications that have expired, like bloodborne pathogens, CPR training, and so on. The note cannot be signed until these certifications have been updated. In that case, you would need to reach out to your supervisor and work with them to get the certifications updated. If everything was in compliance after you entered in your password, the workflow chart would be moved and updated from work in process to signed. Now let's take a look at a PCS note. Again, first step is to click Add a Date and Time. In this case, I was scheduled for a split shift, first from 6 to 11 a.m. and then from 5 to 8 p.m. In order to write one note for two different times worked on the same day, let's look at how you would add these in. First, click on the first shift, verify the time was correct, and then click OK. To get the next piece of time for that day in, click on Add a Date and Time again. And now select the second shift. Verify the time. change the time as needed. In this case, I'm going to give you the example of what happens when you increase the amount of time that was scheduled. So I have now worked 30 minutes more than what was originally scheduled. I'm going to click OK and then hit Save to see my goals. We are now looking at the PCS goals and they will complete it in the same way. Both an intervention key and an assessment key will be needed for each goal. Before signing off the note, be sure to review the accuracy of the data. If you realize that the time is not correct, you can easily edit it by clicking on the pencil icon. And change your time accordingly. Once you are comfortable that the information is correct, click Save and then Sign. Again, certifications are still expired, but there is also an error message for weekly units exceeded. This is because I changed the time from 8 to 8.30, and now, in conjunction with the rest of the PCS schedules out there for the week, this note has gone over the authorized amount of weekly units. This note would not be able to be signed until the supervisor decreases another PCS schedule for the week by 30 minutes. At that point, the hours will be in line with the authorized units. And lastly, let's look at a respite note. This is the respite goal, and you'll notice the keys are a little bit different for the respite service. The only thing required here is to mark whether or not respite was completed, and then add the comments for the day to include all activities that occurred. Save when you're completed, and then sign. You will see that no note can be signed until all of the error messages are resolved. 
This note demonstrates an example of another type of error message. The date of service is more than three days old. In this case, any note that is older than three days old cannot be signed. That is why it is very important to get your documentation entered in timely and that all schedule changes are reported quickly to your supervisor. Once you have successfully signed all of your notes, you have completed with that documentation. There is one other thing to review regarding the notes. If I launch this respite note again, every single note has four tabs. The note tab, the task tab, which will most likely be used for internal communication between you and your supervisor. Typically this is used when the supervisor cannot approve the note and needs to provide you with needed corrections. You can then respond to the task and alert your supervisor when the task has been completed. The task will most likely be managed from your dashboard. And you can learn more about that through the task video. The history section will provide a timestamp of when each note was entered and all activity that was saved. And the DMS tab will create the DMS document, which stands for Document Management System, once the note has been saved. Since this note is still a work in process, there is no actual DMS document yet. As soon as the note was successfully signed, then a, a DMS document would exist. Should you have any questions, please contact your supervisor or on target support by going to Options, Support, Contact Support.